I'm James Solkowski. Thanks for joining me for another free art lesson. We're going to talk about shadow. What is shadow? Because this is a very difficult uh, question for a lot of art students. So I have a portrait here that I painted. And as you can see, here's the shadow on the head and the shadow on the nose. And it's a warm color because shadows tend to be warm in nature. If we're, if we're painting a portrait or a still life, keep the shadow warm and rich and, and, and luminous. So there, there are different mixtures to create this kind of a shadow. So let, let's look at the science of color for a minute. Here's uh, cadmium red light and cobalt blue. So if we mix that together with more red than blue, we'll have a nice warm violet is what this is. Because we know that shadows tend towards violet. So I can use that on the, on the portrait. Or we could use this for an apple, for instance. Let's just quickly do a little apple up here. And I'll show you how this works. See, the, the apple's a spear, so we get that going. And the light is coming from this direction, so the shadow will be over here. And see, that's a nice, rich, warm color. It's also the same for the cast shadow. So whenever I, I mass a shape, I'm going to put the shadow on the object and on the table plane. Okay, now let's, let's talk about another mixture. Because the old masters didn't have cobalt blue, they had vermilion. And so here's what they would use for, for a shadow. They could take a vermilion and raw umber and still get a nice, rich, warm shadow, and it's transparent. See, it it's has a little different quality, but it's still warm, see? That's the important aspect of the shadow. Now, th this is a principle used by, by Rembrandt, Rubens, Leonardo, Caravaggio, even John Singer Sargent would use this sort of a shadow. This is, this is a, for the most part, I mean, if, if other objects might reflect into that, it might affect the shadow. When outdoors, the shadow is very cool, but we're talking about shadow indoors. So and here's, here's a third mixture. If we take raw umber and orange, like a cadmium orange, it's still a, a warm shadow, but it's very rich also. So if you want to keep a shadow transparent, which I like to do, I'll use uh, the cad red light with raw umber. Or you could use the orange and raw umber, see? The, the main point of this is the shadow should be warm, because you know, when most objects will have a warm light, and we have the warm shadow, and then we have cool half tones. So keep the shadows warm in, in portraits and still lifes. So that's our free art lesson for today. I'm James Solkowski. Thanks for joining me.